Hi, I'm Jo Bailey and welcome to my channel where I talk about all things brain. This video is part of my psychiatric profile playlist where I, as a forensic trained clinical psychologist, look at some interesting people, criminals, politicians and celebrities and try to make sense of some of their crazy behaviours and crimes. This video is part five, the final video of my series, Five Strange Things About the Chris Watts Case. And today I'm doing things slightly differently. I am relatively new to this case. I only came upon it probably four or five weeks ago. And I know a lot of the viewers have been following this case since it started. So I'm by no means an expert in this case. I learned very quickly that I wasn't alone in my interest and my uh, fascination with this story. It was quickly apparent that there was a whole bunch of other people equally intrigued by this case. And I learned of this strange place, which I now know is called the Chris Watts Island. And I think I have set up camp there for at least a good month now. In that time, I've made five videos uh, talking about some of the key players in the crime, speculating on their behavior and giving my opinion, which hasn't always been a popular one. None more so than the video that I did on Nicole Kessinger. It seems she is one divisive woman. I mentioned that I don't think she really had a key role in the incident that occurred. Others are quite emotionally passionate um, with an intensity that really shocked me that they believe that she is. And look, everyone is entitled to their opinion. I'm merely speculating here like everyone else. I was not there. I have not assessed anybody. I am not actually providing a clinical diagnosis. This is just my opinion. And my opinion is not fact. And certainly you are allowed to disagree with me but I have had to remove some really rude disrespectful comments so I guess we've been new to YouTube that's something I have to get used to as well anyway today I'm making one more video and then I'm done and I am leaving the Chris Watts Island for good uh, I've got some other stories and some cases that I have in the pipeline that I'm currently working on if you're interested in what they might be I'm going to be updating the community tab on the channel so have a look out for those there but I could not complete this series without a shout out to one of the more inconspicuous players, the unlikely and unsung hero of the story. And that is, of course, the neighbor next door. Now, I hope I pronounce his name correctly. Nathan Trinistich. I've read in a few places that it wasn't necessarily any great police work that got Chris Watts arrested so quickly, but great work of the community, specifically the security footage that was offered up by Nathan very, very quickly. And I should also recognize Shanann's friend, Nicole Atkinson here, as being instrumental in the quick arrest of Chris Watts also. She alerted police within hours, really, of the incident, and I think that gave the police a real great head start that perhaps Chris Watts was not expecting. Well, at least not so quickly anyway. And due to the involvement of both Nathan and Nicole, Chris Watts' plan came undone very quickly. And it's clear that these two people who stuck their necks out for Shanann became instrumental in getting justice for Shanann and the children. Whilst I really liked the work of the agents involved in this case, so Tammy Lee and Graham Coder, and I think they did a fantastic job, I do tend to agree that without the likes of Nathan and Nicole, things would not have happened as efficiently and as swiftly as they did. But today I want to talk about Nathan. I found him very interesting. He was quite the clandestine detective next door. And Nathan, or Nate, as I believe he is called, was Chris Watts' unassuming neighbor. He says they didn't have a real lot to do with each other. He said Chris was rather quiet and withdrawn, might say hello as neighbors do, but he wasn't very close to Chris at all. Nathan was just an ordinary guy, I guess like any one of us could live next door to who inadvertently got caught up in a windstorm of events when he simply offered to show the responding officer his security footage on that August morning of 2018. It just seems kind of odd to me. Why would you show the camera and go to the garage? Right. Yeah, I've never seen him the whole time. I've never seen him. If he loads his stuff, he normally just walks back and forth because I get him on camera. What, what does he usually load up? All he usually has is a lunch box and a book bag, looks like a computer, and usually a water jug, that's it. 
but the fact that he was in here and explaining to it over and over and over, um, it doesn't, he doesn't look worried. He looks like he's trying to cover his tracks. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if he's loaded his stuff, why isn't he walking back and forth? But I can't see what he's doing in the back of the truck because he pulls into the garage. And he knows my camera's there. Don't you think it's, look at the... I know, I'm trying odd. to stop No, I'm just saying it's kind of odd that he pulls his truck back behind my camera. I cut off, the, the truck's in the garage right now. Yeah. And he never backs his truck into the driveway. Right. The other thing was odd is why she was gone. He kept parking his truck and her car over here. Nate gained the attention of the public because of his astute, perceptive, uh, detective skills. And the guy knew from the outset that something wasn't right. And even though he had relatively very little to do with Chris, he just seemed to know that there was reason to be highly suspicious. And he based this solely on watching the video footage and his observation of Chris in his lounge room that day. This video was captured by the attending officer's body cam and it's done the rounds on YouTube and social media. And some have assumed that Nate was the unassuming detective next door. And I tend to agree. Nate became a bit of a suburban hero for a while, even making a guest appearance on Dr. Oz in January 2019. Nate spoke to Dr. Oz about why he found Chris's behavior so strange at the time. To see him putting his hands on his head and see him nervous looking around, constantly on his phone. The other thing I thought that was definitely weird was he wasn't watching the footage at all. He would look at it for a second, then go back to his phone, or look at it for a second, then look away. And if my family was missing, I would be glued to that TV 100% to see if I could see absolutely anything. Now, most of us can look back on events once we know the outcome and we can see things that we didn't see at the time. Our insight and our accuracy improves exponentially when we are looking through the lens of hindsight. So it's not so much what Nate said on the Dr. Oz show that intrigues me, but what he said at the time, well before he, before the police or anyone for that matter, knew that Chris Watts had committed this crime. Before anyone had any reason to even suspect Chris, Nate was all over it. From the very start, Nate was suspicious. Yeah, I definitely just thought it was odd. And I find that interesting because Chris Watts was not someone who drew attention to himself. He certainly wasn't the type of character or neighbor that anyone would have suspected of doing something so heinous. Now, even though Nate did tell the officers at the time that he hears Chris and Shanann fighting a lot, he later withdrew that comment when he was on the Dr. Oz show. He said that he had embellished that a little bit and that Chris and Shanann didn't really fight any more than any other ordinary couple. To be completely honest with you, my wife and I were kind of wondering when she was on if something happened because I've heard them full out screaming at each other at the top of their lungs and he gets crazy. Okay. Um, That's pretty recently. Yeah. At the time I embellished a little bit as far as they fought constantly and I didn't want that to come out that way. It was more like they didn't fight any more than any other couple. Now, I'm not sure why he did that. There has been some speculation as to why he may have withdrawn that comment and I can't be sure. I think I would assume it's just as Nate says it is and that at that time, in that moment, when he was looking at the footage and talking to the officer, he was full of emotion and he may have slightly exaggerated the extent of the fighting. Maybe uh, there was a reason for him to withdraw that comment. I can't be sure. Uh, but no doubt, you know, he heard some arguments and it's not unusual for neighbours to hear the next door couple fighting occasionally. Now, I know this is an incredibly tragic story 
And by no means do I want to make light of the terribly horrific events that occurred. But when I watched Nate for the first time, I thought, this guy is a bloody legend. Uh, He really got my attention. His red cap on backwards, his intense and evaluative gaze, his rationally systemic thought processes, and his spontaneous and accurate assessment of the small details of the situation. His ability to apply uh, logic and rational thought in that moment, as opposed to emotion, as some of us may be inclined to do, was both impressive and, as we now know, spot on. Nate said the things that made Chris Watts' behaviour suspicious to him were the fact that Chris never really looked at the video footage. Nate said if it was him in that situation, he would be intensely looking. He'd be trying to see if anyone came near or in the house, if Shanann left, etc. But Nate said Chris was distracted and in a way disinterested by the CCTV footage and he thought that was strange. When Nate was on Dr. Oz, he said this was a really peculiar moment for him. He noticed that Chris wasn't looking at the CCTV footage. He was looking away. And this didn't make sense to Nate. Why wasn't he concerned about what was happening? Why wasn't he looking for someone in the footage? But if any action would happen, any cars or anything left your house, I would have been like right in that area. Oh, it'll pick up anything coming down the street. This way, you're with that trigger? Oh, yeah. Okay. Imagine what Chris is thinking when he realizes Nate has it all on camera. So, unless they pull right here, yeah. but I would have caught her walking down. Both Nate and Chris know what this means. It means Chris's story isn't making sense. Shanann could not have left because Nate says he would have picked it up. She would have been seen moving across that left top hand corner of the security footage. Nate also notices Chris's body language here. Then randomly, this happens. She's pregnant as well. How far along? 14, 15 weeks. What was Chris possibly thinking here and how weird that that came up on the TV at that moment? Chris leaves the home and you can see that Nate is really eager to say something. No, but you just want to go talk to him, I'm going to get his info real quick. No. No. The accidental detective next door nailed it. Nate also said Chris's body language was off. He noticed that Chris was swaying back and forth. And he gives us a bit of an example of this, both at the time and later on the Dr. Oz show as well. He was kind of swaying back and forth a lot. He also thought it was peculiar that Chris kept insisting and persisted in explaining why he had backed the car into the garage or why he was coming back and forth and what sort of tools he was bringing out to the vehicle. He's over here telling telling you three times what he took out, what he did, what he did, what he did. He's very, he never talks. So the fact that he's over here blabbing his mouth makes me kind of suspicious. Yeah, but, it, I mean, you put yourself in his situation. Oh, I agree. You know, anyone's going to be nervous and you don't know what to do. Um, oh, I agree, but I'm just saying, the way he told you three times what he brought with him, why is he telling you exactly what he brought with him instead of saying, oh, they didn't see anybody out here, he didn't see anybody doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Why is he so worried about you knowing what he's carrying out? That's all I'm saying. Nate thought Chris was being overly descriptive in that moment and making a big deal over something that most of us would think would be innocuous or inconsequential in normal situations. But he was right. We now know that Chris backed the car up into the driveway and was moving back and forth, extracting Shanann's body and bringing the children out to the car. So Nate got that one right as well. 
Now, just to tie this in with psychology and why I think Nate is such an interesting character, aside from his perceptive and accurate assessment of Chris Watts at the time, is because many people may think very little of what Nate did. They may think, oh, he was just showing the video footage, and, and in some ways that's true. But the reality of the situation is that many people don't help. They don't offer their support. They don't like to get involved in these kinds of situations. In a perfect world, we would all like to think we help one another in times of need. A little bit of the do unto others as you would have them do unto you kind of mentality. But this is reciprocal altruism in action. And, uh, you know, I help you and you help me. And whilst that sounds lovely and sometimes does occur, the truth is many people who need help don't get the help they need in times of emergencies because people prefer to avert their eyes. They turn their heads, they look away, they pass by, they don't want to get involved. This is especially true when there are already other people attending the situation. And it's compounded further when those other people attending the situation are emergency personnel. This is such a well-documented phenomenon in social psychology. It has its own area of research and it's called the bystander effect. We may like to sticky beak and have a look and see what's going on. And in this digital age, the majority of people are pulling out their cell phones and taking videos of what's happening. But only a certain few will actually stand up and actively get involved, especially when the situation is distressful, uncertain, uh, violent or unexpected. There are some incredibly interesting and well-known examples of the bystander effect, such as the removal of a normal, everyday, well-behaved passenger from a United Airlines flight on April 9, 2017. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! No! Guys, my God! What are you doing? No, this is wrong. Oh my God! Look at what you did to him! Oh my god! Oh my god! Good work, guys. Good work. Way to go. But that's another story and one you will soon find in a new psychology playlist I'm creating on my channel. But point is, often people prefer to stay out of it, even when doing something could be incredibly useful or even potentially life changing. Now, I know in Nate's case, the police would have come knocking at some point anyway. That's a given. But the critical thing here is Nate didn't wait. He didn't waste any time. He involved himself in the most instrumental and helpful manner from the very outset. And his decision to do so was critical in the quick identification of Chris as a prime suspect and the ultimate perpetrator. Nicole Atkinson's role was a little different, albeit equally instrumental and helpful in alerting police so soon, but she had a vested interest in Shanann as being her close friend. But Nate, he was just the neighbour next door with very little knowledge and contact with the Watts family. And he chose willingly to freely offer himself and he played a pivotal role in the line of inquiry that the police then took. So given Nate is so perceptive and intuitive, given his analysis of the footage of Chris Watts' behavior was so accurate, I would like Nate to now provide the final words on what he thinks of Chris Watts because I believe Nate has earned a credible platform to offer a reliable assessment. So what does Nate think of Chris Watts? Part of me thinks he's a monster. For you to be able to do that to your wife and especially your kids. And my personal opinion on it is, is I think sitting in a jail cell thinking about what you did every day is a lot more punishment than sitting on a death row and constantly thinking about your case and how I'm going to beat it and how I'm going to... It would give him other things to think about instead of what he should be thinking about, which is his family and what he did to them. So Nate sees Chris now as a bit of a monster and believes that his sentence of life in jail is a just sentence. And many people I have also heard describe Chris as a monster. And I think I've used the word evil too. And whilst people in my profession try to avoid words like monster and evil, I think this is one exception where I'll let the rules slide and say that Nate has again hit the mark and 
got that one right too. So thank you to Nate and to Nikki and to the entire community that worked together so quickly and helped put Chris Watts where he belongs. It's been said that time heals all wounds, but I do not agree. Some wounds will remain forever. And this wound hurt a lot of people, many of them complete strangers all around the world who three years on are still perplexed, still curious, saddened, and still trying to understand what happened here. And of course, this is a wound that's never going to heal for those directly involved and impacted by it. So I cannot say that time will heal, but time gives us space to try and comprehend, try and process, uh, for some to forgive, some to forget, but for most to try and find a small place in their lives or in their hearts to think, to honor and remember the short but beautiful lives of Shannon, of Bella, of Cece and little Nico. Time may pass, but their memory will never be gone. Thanks for being part of this series. It's been a tough one to research and it's been a tougher one to try and make sense of. And I guess in the end, there is no sense to be made out of what happened here. I have a lot of new ideas and new content and projects in the pipeline. So I'm going to be working on those soon. I hope you'll join me for those in the future. If you have any ideas or if you have cases that you'd like me to look at, let me know. Write them in the comment section below because I came upon Chris Watts because of a viewer. I also recently did a video on Paris Bennett and a viewer also told me about him. So please hit me up with names. I'm really curious to have a look and learn more and to share my thoughts with you. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other and have a very happy and peace-filled day. Bye for now. If you found this video to be helpful, then please consider liking or subscribing to my channel. That allows me more opportunity to provide free content for you. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other and have a very happy and peace-filled day. Bye now.